Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and you're going to be nicer to tech support after watching this video. The first thing never works. When I got the ticket, it had been open for six plus months, gone through five or six technicians on the first, second and third line, and they've done pretty much everything humanly possible short of swapping out the whole computer, but nothing had helped. There was probably around 80 to 100 tech hours put into this so far. Weird thing is, the error message is clearly logged and it points to a known issue. Could the other techs really have missed this? Nope. The first tech emailed the customer a link to the update that fixes the issue inside of 15 minutes from the first call, and I see three other techs have directed the customer back to that first email with instructions to install the fix. Each time, the customer has responded that she did, but it didn't cause any change in the problem, still getting the same error message. I had a gut feeling, and sent her the link to the update again, but this time saying that Hey, I've got something new for you to test. And the next morning, I call the customer. Hi, I emailed you a link to the new patch which should fix the problem you're having with the game. Have you had a chance to try it? Yeah, I did and the game's working now, but this is crappy support, entirely unacceptable to wait six months. Think of my poor son, he hasn't been able to play his Christmas present and goes off on a rant about how much we suck. I'm sorry to hear that, but if I could ask you just one thing, See, the link I sent you is exactly the same one that we had sent you on the very first day you called us, and I see in the log that you replied to that email saying that you had installed it, but that didn't change anything. Is that correct? The first link? No, I didn't bother with that one. Everyone knows that the first thing you suggest never works, so I just said I did. I can't believe it took you six months. How are you going to explain this to my son? And winding up the rant again. Sorry ma'am, it looks like we sent you the solution on the very first day, but you chose not to follow the instructions. But as things are now working, I'm going to close your ticket, and I'll leave it up to you to explain to the kid why it took so long. There was also a fantastic comment right under this story. The first thing never works. Ma'am, this is tech support, not an episode of House. <laughs> and it's never lupus. Wait, you restart the computer by closing and opening the lid? Oh jeez. User comes into my office complaining of a real slow machine. Chrome is slow. Word is slow. Everything is slow and the computer is pretty hot. I was finishing up a draft of something real quick, don't remember what. Could you save and close everything down and restart the computer for me please? Of course, sure. Not even a minute later she had closed everything and restarted the machine and hands me the machine. The restart of the machine went surprisingly quick considering that the user was here for a slow machine. The user proceeds to give the machine to me. Did you restart the machine? Yes. I find it odd, so I decided to check the process monitor and oh god. I lost count of how many chromes I saw, how many winword.exes and everything else I saw. CPU 100%, RAM 100%. Just a curious question, how do you restart the computer normally? I close the lid and open it again and then I come to the login screen. <laughs> I try to show her the white- <laughs> I tried to show her the right way to restart the computer, but it would not even turn off for over 5 minutes. I end up forced shutting down the computer, but explain that it's the wrong way to reboot the computer and why I had to do it. During the reboot, I get a CPU fan error. The poor guy had worked so hard it had died. I guess because she had never rebooted the machine, she had never got the CPU fan error. The user later tells me that she's had the machine 2 years and never intentionally rebooted the machine the way I showed her, only close and open the lid. After a new fan is installed and a fresh installation, I could almost hear the machine thanking me. The computer must have restarted itself at least once, right? Or did she continuously postpone every cry for help? What do you think? Rest in peace, unknown fan. You did your best. Live your best life in the recycling centre. Don't use logic. So I've been doing tech support in a call centre now for over 12 years for various companies. I finally escaped the call centre and I'm now a cloud server technician. Anyway, with so many years, as many have realised in tech support, you get some amazing stories to share. I was working for a small ISP. We primarily worked with small businesses, providing DSL and tier 1 services. We had some residential customers who'd been with us since the beginning, and many people in our city loved us. Especially since we were US based and our training was rigorous and any one of us could have probably passed the Net Plus certification test. I worked the swing shift. I was off at 11pm. It was a great shift, usually pretty quiet, but we got some of the hardest issues, like intermittent connectivity. Shudders. I received a call. 
her internet was down. I pulled up her snapshot of the connection and see a connection to the modem and see a decent amount of traffic going to the modem. I ran a timeless ping and they reached their IP without any drops. I asked them if they had another computer. She said yes. I asked if she had a router and she said yes. I asked if she could go to the second computer and see if she can connect. She says that she can connect just fine. I verified the connections. Both were into the router. So the issue is either the computer or the router. Per company policy, we couldn't troubleshoot beyond the modem as the company didn't want to be responsible for any damage to the equipment. Most customers understood and would call Geek Squad or a family member to help them. The most we could do is walk through assigning the static IP to their device, which we only provided static IPs. I let the customer know that the issue is either the router or the computer and advise she can try unplugging the power to the router for two minutes and seeing if that helps. But since the other computer was working and both were plugged into the router, it's most likely the computer, but the router could just be having issues. I explained that we're unable to troubleshoot the LAN and our computer due to them not being our equipment. She blew up on me. This isn't an issue with my equipment. This is an issue with your service. It sucks. It's not working. I again tried to explain that I'm seeing traffic coming to and from the modem. I'm able to ping the IP. So it's even getting to the router as that's where the static IP would be set up. So the internet was working fine. That didn't work. She was screaming and yelling at me. So I tried to use logic. Big mistake. I explained that the other computer was working fine. She was able to get to other websites, so the internet was working fine. She responded, I kid you not, with, don't use logic on this. This is an illogical situation. I took a deep breath, advise the internet is working fine and there's nothing more we can do. She said many choice words and hung up on me. I was dumbfounded and all I could do was laugh after the call ended. It was hard to hold it back while on the call. To this day, I've never heard anyone else say that or anything similar. Arguing with outsourced IT script readers. Disclaimer, I am not an IT professional in any way, shape or form, so apologies if I do not use the correct terms. I am the guy on the office floor who knows enough to be useful and also a complete menace to any IT department. For example, I know how to map drives and hardware, configure basic settings, and most importantly, how to turn it off and on again. So, IT usually has a love-hate relationship with me, as most people on the floor ask me for help before going to the effort of contacting IT and fielding all the crap queries, but on occasion I'll break it bad and cause them headaches to fix. Anyway, on to the story. About 10 years ago I worked in payroll for a global outsourced payroll processing company that used multiple front-end interfaces to process the data. One of the programs was cloud-based I think and had a very common fault. If a user did not log out correctly and crashed out for whatever reason, they would sometimes not be able to log back into that program as it would say they are already logged in. The fix is very simple and straightforward. Call IT, ask them to go to the remote server that the program is running from and delete the instance that is locked to that user. Our company had some internal IT for hardware maintenance and outsourced the rest to offshore Indians call centers. Now, I'm not a hater of offshore call centers provided the service center rep knows more than an untrained monkey like me. Unfortunately, more than a few tier one support staff seem to be call center folk who cannot go off script. I'm not sure if this is policy or lack of knowledge on their part, so I try not to judge overly harsh. Their default response to nearly every scenario was to get your computer ID so they could remote in and mess about with your computer settings. 90% of the time they would lose the mapping to the drives, printers or email customization somehow. This meant no one wanted to call them unless they really had to. One of my staff had the issue of a ghost instance, locking them out, so I instructed her to call IT, explain the need to delete her instance from the remote server, and under no circumstances is she allowed them to remote into her computer because it cannot be fixed from the local system. 30 minutes later, I come back from a meeting and ask how it's going, only to find that she's watching her screen as they've remoted into her computer and are messing around in the control panel. I was a bit annoyed, as a two minute maximum job has wasted 30 minutes of my staff's time. I proceeded to have an argument with the IT person via notepad on the screen, explaining that they need to delete the instance on the remote server and there is nothing they can do from this machine. They kept trying to go through the numbers on their default checklist, looking through systems and programs that have nothing to do with the issue. The conversation kept going around in circles before I gave up and ended the remote access. I phoned IT support again and went over the same argument with the next person that they didn't need to remote in before being escalated to tier 2. Tier 2 has wonderful people that know so much more than me, understood the problem as I explained it and resolved it in seconds. 
I just wish IT call centers either employed fully trained staff or allowed them to go off script, whatever the underlying issue may be, as it ruins the benefit to business outsourcing. Okay, so that's all for r slash Tales from Tech Support. I really hope you did enjoy it. As always, if you do want to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. My Twitter, Discord and Patreon links are in the description, and any support is greatly appreciated. And as it's Sunday, I also want to say a massive thank you to my wonderful patrons. Backwards D-Dog, Tyler Miller, Jen Burton, Jen Spanning, Bo Walker, Princess Kate, Skylar A, Elizabeth Fillmore, Stephen Arnowit, Shigar, Colton, James Scanlon, and Darkimedes. Thank you all so much for your support. Mwah. That's for you. But keep it between us, okay? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye!